In this video, I'm going to work with strokes, uh, the, how to zoom using both the tool and keystrokes. We're going to work with the appearance, appearance, I'm sorry, the appearance and swatch panels. We're going to talk a little bit with color, and we're also going to use the eye drop tool. So, uh, eye dropper tool. So, I've got this set up to uh, Essential Classics and um, I, if, if you're working along with me, I would recommend that you do that unless you absolutely love your setup and you don't want to change it. That's totally fine. But I'm going to get rid of some things that I don't need. Oops, a daisy. Now, I was in the pen tool, and you can see I, I don't want that, right? So, and this happens, and it will drive you crazy. So what you do is you hit the escape key, okay? Now, I also have that point over here, which I do not want, and I'm going to go ahead and hit delete because I don't want that floating around in there. Okay, so let's look at what we need. First of all, I don't need either of these, so I'm going to get rid of those. Now, with these panels here, I'm going to be using some of them. And remember that when you put your pointer tool over them, they'll tell you exactly what it is that you're looking at. So one of the things I'm going to be looking at using a little bit later is the um, appearance palette. Okay, put that down here. We're definitely going to be using the stroke. We don't need those other things. We will talk about transparency and so on later. Um, we will be working with swatches. I'm going to pull that down here. We will look at the color guide. And we will look at color. So let's stack those all over there. Okay, so first I'm going to start by making some shapes. The default setting is... Um, black and white. So the, the fill is white and the stroke is black. And right now, because this, tool, this tile is on top, that means that we're actively going to be work, working with the fill opposed to the stroke. If you want to change that, you simply click here. Oops, I'm sorry. You click on the on the on the tile. Now, if I had a, a, a shape up there, I'd be actively working on the stroke. And let's put a shape up there. Okay, I'm going to do a rectangle. And this automatically comes up. Um, I'm not going to be using it, but because it's going to pop up every time I make a shape, I'm just going to uh, um, crunch it down and put it down in the corner. Um, another thing that I would like to have is I would like to have a triangle. So a reminder on that, you get the polygon tool and you click. And um, it, the default setting is 6. Um, I've already used this recently, so it's still picking up the 3 that I had on there. But you would change that. This would be the default setting. You would see this. So we simply click on sides and bring it down to 3 and say OK. And it's so tiny. It's so, so amazingly tiny. There's a couple ways we can... Actually, I'm just going to get rid of this because that's kind of ridiculous. So, um, because I know it's set at a triangle, I can simply click and drag. There we go. And I'm going to get my selection tool and move it over. And one last thing, and we're not going to focus on this today, but I do need it for my discussion on strokes, is I'm going to make just a basic line using the pen tool. And to end that, because I'm not going to close it off, I'm going to click, I'm going to click on the escape key. And there we go. That's that basic line. Okay, so um, Let's talk about a few tools. One is the zoom tool. Now, you can you can zoom in a, a couple different manners. One is you can go ahead and grab the tool here, and you can click, and you, you'll notice in the, in the center there's a plus. So that's telling me whatever I do, it's going to make it larger. So I'm going to click and mark, I'm going to click and pull it up. Okay, so that's one way. Now I'm going to put this back to the standard size, which is Control-Zero. 
and um, let's say I want to zoom out. So what I would do is I would hit the Alt key, and you can see how my pointer tool has now become a negative. So that's that's one way to do this. Okay, Control Zero. Now, one thing that I tend to do is I like to use the keystrokes, and I'm a web girl, so I'm using Control Spacebar at the same time, and you'll notice that I let me get in another tool just so you can see how it will flip over to that. So I'm here in the brush tool. Okay, see so I did control space bar and I've got the ability to to zoom. And if I want to zoom back, I can do control space bar and alt. And there we go. Now, last but not least, and this isn't hasn't got quite the control of the, the, the ways that we've done it, but this is another handy thing is control minus to, re, to reduce back and control plus key. Okay, so that's some ways that you can zoom. Now another thing, and I'm going to get over here into a pointer selection tool. Another thing that you can do is to get the hand tool, you simply hit spacebar, and I use that frequently. It is over here, but I find it easier to just hit the space bar and, and move things around. So let's actually go up to this piece here. I'm going to select it with my direct selection tool. And it's a little difficult to see. Let me zoom in. But I can tell it's highlighted for a couple of reasons. And one of them is because I have that blue line running through the center of the stroke trying to get to a handle here. There we go. I've got the blue line and I also have the corners all selected. So that's telling me that's active. Oopsie. I'm zooming out here. Okay, so I'm going to grab the, the, the stroke palette and this is what it looks like when you first pull it out. The options are not there. Um, I'll pull those up in just a minute, but right now the default setting is going to be a weight of one point, and I can go ahead and I can change that by simply clicking on here. Same thing for going backwards. Now also keep in mind that you can do that up here as well, so that's that's just a really nice handy, handy thing to have. So, um, okay, so there's that. I'm going to now go into this one down here and I'm going to change the color of the stroke and I can tell that I'm in the stroke because this is on top and I'm going to change that stroke color to, to pink. So now that's a little hard to see. I'm going to go ahead and make the stroke size, let's make the stroke size 12, and now I want to change the fill to a different hue, so I'm going to come over here, I'm going to click, and I'm going to make that hue green. Okay, so here we are. And last but not least, let me zoom out because I seem to have lost it. Oop. I accidentally deleted my line, so I'm going to go ahead and make another one with the pen tool. Here we go, pen tool. Click and click. And hit the escape key to get out of that. And oops, hit escape. There we go. Okay. Going back to my direct selection tool. Okay. So, um... Let's talk about this for a minute. I'm going to zoom back in here. And things that you can do while you have the shape selected. You can change the fill. You can just swap out the fill and the stroke color if you'd like. Let's say I wanted to have no fill at all. I don't want it to be white. I want it to have no fill. So if I have a background color that's purple. When I take the fill out, it's going to show the purple in the background. So here we go. It's that simple. Now, I do want that back in there, so I'm going to control Z it and put that in there. Um, also, if I, for whatever reasons, need to go to the default, the original hues, I click here 
and there we go. But I actually want it to look like what it was, so Control Z. So another really handy thing about the tool palette is if you click on the options, which are these three little lines over here, show options, you can see I get a variety of things that I can do. So um, first let's go up to uh, the caps, which is over here. And again, we will talk about uh, using the pen tool in a later video, but I just want to at least let you see what these do. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. And right now it's got the cap of this, cap of this line at the very, the anchor is at the very edge of the line. If I click on this, you can see the edge of the line expands past that anchor and it rounds. And then we also have this one as well. It's still a flat one, but it's past the anchor. So this is caps. Now let's look at corners. And you can see right now we've got the mitered joint. Here's what happens when I click this center one, which is the rounded joint. And then here's a beveled joint. So you have some options here. You'll notice that it's applying to the edges here and not in there. Okay. And um, last but not least, I'm going to do this up here actually. A little variety in shapes. The align strokes. This is actually very handy. So here we go. It's selected. You can see where that line, that path is. Now if I click this one, align stroke to the inside, you can see here's where the edge of that box is now. If I do this, it's pushing it to the outside. So when we do the doodle project, this will be a very, very handy um, thing to have and to, to be able to use. Now another thing you can do in the options of the stroke palette is you can create a dashed line. And, and right now it's doing 12 point dash with a gap that's 12 points. If I wanted to change out the distance between the gaps, let's say I want it to be 12 point dash with a 6 point gap, you simply type it in there. And you can see it goes so on and so on and so on. You could change this to a variety of ways. I'm not sure that, you know, maybe there's a reason you'll want to do this. Give yourself a little variety here. So, this is dashes. This is what you can do. If you want it to all be um, just one standard fill and gap, you just do it in the first one. And it will take that number and put it around. There we go. Um, so that's, that's also something that's really fun to, to, to play with. So, okay, so there is that. Now let's look at a couple other things about color. And I'm going to put this over here. I don't want that quite yet. So. so one way you can get in here is you can double click on that. You can come into the color picker. picker. I actually need to have something selected to have that work. I think I'll come down here and I'm actually going to duplicate this by Alt and drag. Okay. So I've got this selected. I'm going to change the fill. Okay, I can do that in here. Um, there is also a swatch palette that some people enjoy using. And this is about the default here. Now you have the ability to get other colors in this and how you can do that is you go to Swatch Library Menu which is down in the bottom left hand corner of that palette. There's other ways to get there but this is one of them. And let's say I would like to have um, let's say I would like to have Earth Tones. 
go ahead and click that. And up comes this little palette here. Pull this sucker over here. And these are some suggested color combinations. So let's say I want to have this one and I want to have for the stroke, I want to have this one. Oops, did I get that? Oh, I was still in the wrong one. I need to come over here and grab this. Okay, now I will be changing that. Let's say over here, I'm going to do the stroke and then the fill is here. Okay, so I'm going to get these other ones out just because don't need them for the time being. So let's say I want some variety on these in the sense of value. With this one selected, I can see here are some suggested value changes. Oopsie. Let's go to the stroke on this one. Okay, here we go. Oops, a daisy. There we go. So there's other ways you can go about this, but this is this is one way to kind of experiment with color.